The rain has been relentless all night, but that's not going to stop us just yet. Ready for kickoff between Creekside and Glen Academy. The Knights won the toss, defer their option to the second half, and we are finally underway in Brunswick. DJ Baldwin opts to let that sail over his head into the end zone, and that brings out the Red Terrors offense for the first time tonight. On its home field, it is facing a real tough Creekside team. How much tougher does it get trying to run the ball and go according to your game plan you had set up yesterday? Yeah, I don't think that's going to really affect the Red Terrors tonight. They're going to do what they do. They'll run the ball with the wing tee, get a little play action moving. Um, you know, got a real good handle. I don't think it affects them as much. Give up the middle. This is DJ Baldwin fighting forward and tackled just in front of the 25-yard line. The good news is we were walking around the field to see how is it going to hold up tonight. It is a great new facility, great new turf that was put in just three weeks ago. They're really going to test it tonight. Yeah, especially with all the rain we've had. On second and six, a give up the middle. Baldwin back to work, spins, and fights for a first down. They're taking the run right down into the inside of the, the strength. Uh, you'll hear Xavier Cummings, 95. I'm sorry. Tyler Jenkins, 95. Big, big sophomore inside. Been one of the biggest disruptors they've had that's had a really good year. They knew he was going to be special, but he's really been playing like a senior, young sophomore inside defensive tackle. This kid's going to have to grow up today. The rain continues to get stronger even after kickoff. Devlin hands off for a third straight time, but nowhere to go on this run. With a great sprint up the middle. It's Creekside's Elias Pagan, the senior defensive lineman with the tackle for loss. Yeah, they just trying to run a little inside zone. The, the, the H-back didn't get the kick box. It sort of looped around and made a really good play to grab on. And again, it's going to be a sort of a feel it out this first drive for both teams as they, as they sort of get the footing on the field and get used to playing in this weather because it's really coming down now. Second and 11, man in motion. Devlin pitches it back to Baldwin, his fourth straight carry to start the night. And a group of Knights upend him at the 34. Junior defensive, offensive lineman, Max Polsky out there in front, really doing a nice job getting on the block and everything. Again, they've got a pretty good senior group. Uh, offensive lineman with 79, Joseph Moore, John McLeod, 78. Edron Jackson, 70 in there, and they've really got a pretty good experienced group. So you look for them to keep it on the ground, especially the way the wet weather's going. They might get a surprise, a little quick screen or something, but this is a big down right here. With the, oh, we got a penalty on top of that. There was a penalty after the whistle, so a personal foul assessed at the 34. Brings it out 15 yards, and not only just a penalty, it's going to be third down and about six. Yeah, it was going to be, and, and you know, with the way the weather is, it's going to be tough sled, and it's going to be tight in there. You can't give up free yards in a game like this, especially under these conditions. Creekside going up against an opponent in Glen Academy that's playing with a little fire under itself after a bad loss last week. Ball Devlin the drops the snap, still loose between oh. his legs, and the quarterback finally finds it and covers it. Yeah, he was lucky to get back on that. The center kicked it after it hit the ground and sort of bounced back. Check out this replay presented by RV it's Clinics. It's on the ground right there. And, you know, they don't know what's going on in the linemen, so they're blocking, and the quarterback sees it, and he gets knocked sort of down because he's getting he's lucky to get up on top of that. Again, I think we're going to see a little bit of that. That's the first time they've been under center, so maybe they'll get back in the gun be like holding on to a greased watermelon tonight. Another run up the middle. Baldwin bounces to the outside off tackle. Gets across midfield to pick up four yards. Drew Warwick in there, the senior outside linebacker, defensive back, strong safety, getting in there, uh, making a play. Keeping them up, they'll start sort of creeping those DBs and stuff up a little bit, getting a little bit closer to the run, working those run fits in there, especially 
again, the way the weather is. And uh, i tell you what, it's nice up here, though. They're not getting much wet up here, Sean. Nice and dry for now. <laughs> Crazier things have happened, but that's what Sean McIntyre, Creekside's head coach, said, that he really is counting on his defensive backfield to fly in and make necessary tackles on the outside. Devlin to throw for the first time, quickly under pressure, and lost the ball. Glenn Academy jumps on it before they lose it again, and this time the Knights have it. That's 55 on the recovery. Cole, Cole Long comes up with the football. It looks like he wanted to go up top right there, but they sort of either ran the wrong route, and then he started to scramble around, and again, you're trying to hang on to that ball, and bodies flying around at you. Once again, it's Pagan who got in the backfield and forced the initial pressure on Devlin. Yeah, again, real salty on defense a little bit. Now, they're going to be a contrast of styles because we're going to have Creekside offensively get up there, and they're going to get lined up, and they're going to do some checks at the line, and they'll run some tempo and everything like that. Wilson Edwards trots onto the field with his offense. Nicky Williams behind him. Fields the low snap. Hands it off to the back. Even through the defense for a moment before he's tackled inside the 30. Let's go downstairs and meet our sideline reporter turned meteorologist Mia O'Brien. Hey, thanks a lot, Sean and Coach. Uh, needless to say, absolutely soaking wet conditions here on the sideline. I'm standing on your near sideline for the Creekside Knights, who obviously extremely happy with the turn of events that just occurred. But I got to tell you, they have coaches literally throwing their cell phones to trainers here underneath the tent because that is just how wet it is with the rain coming down right now. They're worried about cell phones. They're worried about the iPads possibly getting over getting soaked so yeah these are some very severe conditions we're dealing with but obviously creekside overcoming them so far all right thanks mia it hasn't seemed to bother creekside's players a couple of nice runs on their opening possession ball on the time, ground oh. before the snap is fumbled a penalty marker comes out and saves the knights from disaster and even worse for glenn academy that offside's enough to move the chains. Yeah, not only that, they were getting ready to get a turnover off the fumble on the snap. And, uh, you know, again, sort of everybody's got to feel out, and their footing's going to be a little bit different. And I'll tell you what, it's uh, they, they've gone a little bit of tempo. They're, they're doing a little zone read inside. Creekside's starting to move it pretty good. Now the Knights entering the red zone for the first time tonight, brought to you by Douglas Phelps Insurance. After catching a break on the previous snap, safe handoff to Williams, who is coming off a phenomenal performance. A buck 86 on the ground and five touchdowns in a rivalry win against Nice last week. That was WJXT's game of the week last week. So this audience knows what this team is capable of. After a two yard gain, Edwards, Bounces to the outside and is tackled, and that'll draw a flag. Tackled after he steps out at the 12. That's half the distance to the goal. Yeah, Edwards did a nice job right there. He pulled it on. They brought some pressure off the edge. Both guys chased a running back. Uh, Devlin takes it right there, pulls it, gets on the edge, and just sort of just keeps running. And he's out of bounds, gets tackled out of bounds, tack on, you know, half the distance to the goal right there. Got to let that guy, got to gotta have a little field awareness on that penalty. Dante Lang, one of the most consistent players, commits the foul. Williams stays upright for a moment and falls forward inside the five. Yeah, Williams, good, hard, strong runner inside. Uh, does a nice job, good body control, breaks the tackle right there. Devonte Lang, the linebacker, and gets up inside the five. Second and goal from the three. Williams back to work, sheds a tackler, and waltzes into the end zone. That's a real nice drive coming back. Penalty marker is down on the far side of the field, so hold the celebration for now. Because that is coming back. Moving 
five yards back to the eight. Coach McIntyre trying to stay as dry as possible out there. Imagine the six-year head coach not too happy about that. Right back to work, Williams busts through the line and scampers into the end zone. Okay, now, <laughs> picking up right where he left off, Jacksonville's leader in rushing touchdowns gets his eighth of the season. That's a really nice job by the offensive tackle on the pull 72, Austin Aiken, the junior. Really nice job, really nice block right there to, to open up that hole. And that's just sort of how they are. You know, they're pretty efficient. They're pretty effective. A uh, little inside zone, little pull, little rat play, and, and right down the field, real strong running back. Extra point from Ronald Derajati. Splits the uprights. I'll take one more look. Williams is eighth touchdown of the season. You know, the good thing, like, what what they're doing is they, they put that end in a bind because of, of the quarterback pull the last time. So that, that they're reading the three technique on the right. They turn the end out and read the three technique. So he chases it. He sort of gets frozen, and then they hand it off, and then they take it right up in there. Really good, efficient drive right there for Creekside. On the short field, too, after yep. recovering the fumble at the 33. Yeah, I love what Williams said at the beginning of that Nice game last week. He noticed in the first half his opponent was getting tired and they didn't want any of us in the second half and he really credited and said our old line punched them in the mouth and set the tone as they put up 62 points in the win yeah tremendous effort and that's a big rival those two schools right there you know they're not separated by that that much mileage over there so you know little bragging rights and everything so uh, they played some really good games over the years but uh, that was a statement game i thought The Knights to kick off. Now with a seven-point lead nearly midway through the first quarter. This is going to be a short possession games here. Drop for a moment. Now DJ Baldwin finding his footing. Put down at the 22. Step aside for a hydration break brought to you by Body Armor. Creekside off the turnover, scores a touchdown, and leads 7 0 in Brunswick. Glen Academy takes over at its own 22. Devlin pitches it on the option, but Creekside sniffs it out right away. This is Nathan Hernandez. The senior linebacker with a tackle for loss back at the 18. Yeah, I don't know if you want to be running. I mean, I know it's their offense and everything, and coach knows what's going on, but I don't think they're getting what they want because with the with the pitch game, you're just extending the field, and they're not really doing a lot of great penetrating because of the field conditions and everything. So um, I think we might get back on the downhill running and, and sort of read what's going on. You got that senior heavy offensive line, a lot of experience. Run behind it. Second and 14. Devlin pitches it back. Here's Greg Peacock. The Swiss Army knife for the Red Terrors. Makes something out of nothing. And turns it into a much more manageable third down. Yeah, that's a really good play by Devlin. He, he just took the little option read. Took it off the option. Avoided one guy. Still kept his ability to get the pitch off. And uh, Peacock... Getting in here, getting going. Weren't sure if he was going to play tonight. He's been a little banged up this week. But got him in, got him active, and that make it a manageable third down. Didn't practice all week. Was reevaluated yesterday afternoon. Clearly good to go. Devlin looks to go inside and is wrestled down behind the line. Another big stop. And guess who? It's Hernandez again. Yeah, he's been very active tonight so far on these two series. Hernandez, uh, they're doing a good job. The, the rain's really hampered them to be able to throw the ball. Number two, David Prince, you know, six foot five wide out. And with a game like that, I don't know if he really plays into the game plan right now, what they're trying to do. But it's all Creekside so far. 
One of Creekside's two returning defensive starters with a couple of massive tackles to force the punt. Brendan McMillan is back to return for the Knights and wisely lets this one take a red terror roll inside the 20 and down at the 17. That's what you'd expect from one of the best punting prospects in all of America, Cody Arnold, right on cue. Doesn't mind a little rain on his Thursday night. No, it doesn't mind on him. That's about a 57-yard punt to flip the field position a little bit and uh, see if they can get uh, their defense going a little bit and get going. So, Time to meet the Creekside Knights in the midst of a resurgence under Coach Sean McIntyre. The school had some up and downs. Just one playoff win in 14 seasons so far, but year 15 looks to be one special season. Williams back in at running back, takes the carry and immediately stuffed at the line before gaining two yards on a carry. Yeah, that Williams usually does, you know, they do a pretty good job what they're doing. They, they tighten up a little bit and bring in a little bit of extra pressure off the boundary there. Um, keen up on the H back 88, sort of seeing what they're doing. This time a quarterback keeper, Edwards. Nothing doing there. Good pursuit, good push by that Red Terror defensive line. Yeah, Devontae Lang, another linebacker in there getting a little clean up of uh, 99. Xavier Cummings, they're starting to exert themselves a little bit inside. Big third down here. Third and long for the Knights. Playing it safe on third and eight. Williams breaks loose for a moment, but loses his footing before falling down at the 25. And now both teams trade three and outs following the touchdown. Yeah, I got to really take care of the ball. Williams breaking the tackle, coming through and just losing his footing. Ball comes out late. But uh, Glenn Academy got to feel good. Red Terrors got to feel good about getting that stop, sort of settling into the game a little bit. Greg Peacock, the stud sophomore back for the Red Terrors. Arnold for Glenn Academy helped flip the field position battle. Creekside on a bad down. snap. You said it. The knee was down inside the 15-yard line. Yep. Snap's a little low. Now let's see. And then he goes, drops it. Ooh, I don't know about Ooh. that. That's close, but I don't know about that. Looked like a quick whistle from referee Craig Hubbard. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that one. It was, it, it looked like it, but he didn't have position of the ball until, and the ball sort of shortstop hopped it. Quickly, let's go back downstairs to Mia. Hey guys, Creekside improved to 2-0 last week with a huge win over future Florida Gator Marcus Stokes and their crosstown rivals in East Panthers. Head coach Sean McIntyre saying that was a microcosm of what this team has become in the past three years. Special teams being elite and the team take, and his Creekside Knights taking advantage of the clock. With Stokes and Nice up by two with about two minutes left to go, Creekside drove down the field and kicked a field goal before halftime. That's something that Coach McIntyre says wouldn't have happened a few years ago. That allowed Creekside to go up going into half. They scored a touchdown coming out of the break and then Bruno Alvin with an interception of Stokes on the following drive and Coach McIntyre saying that taking advantage of those opportunities is something that this team didn't do about three or four years ago and capitalizing on those chances as well as special teams opportunities going to be key tonight. We see right now that one of those key moments may have just happened. Yeah, nothing like learning a little bit about your team when you're back on your heels. Mia, you bring up a great point because it reminds me of something Coach McIntyre said to the St. Augustine record after that win against Nice. He said, we're a football program. The difference between teams and programs is, well, you play the same way every single year. It's just that mentality that every year it is going to be same and consistent. Doesn't matter who's wearing that helmet, what you've built is going to last. And that's something incredible that he's done now in his sixth year after he took over a program that went 0-19 in back-to-back -back seasons before he took over. Yeah, without a doubt. Handoff on first down goes to Devontae Lang. 
Yeah, that's a little bit of wildcat in there, a little power. Uh, I won't call it a, a sort of wing T-ish looking, but it's sort of like a heavy stack backfield in a T, but the quarterback's behind the center in the gun, you know. It's one of those uh, three running back formations. In the red zone, brought to you by Douglas Phelps Insurance the Academy. Trying to cash in on the error from the special teams unit right up the middle and stopped right in front of the first down marker. That's Hernandez again with another tackle down there in the bottom of that pile. It's sort of just sort of big man on big man and leading up in there with the extra guys. Old See school him. power eye look. Got him around the ankles to prevent the first down and maybe touchdown. And you say it was enough, so first and goal. Same play, trying to get to the goal line, but held up by Colton Lievel. The sophomore linebacker has created second and goal, but Glen Academy, inch by inch, getting closer to Pater. Yeah, Devontae Lang coming in there and just sort of, they're just sort of just getting off the ball and trying to fit him. They're a little bit bigger than Creekside all the way across the board, so maybe they're just trying to get a hat on a hat, get an extra guy in there and pound it up in there, running in there behind big number 70. Doing a nice job, Lang Jackson. Known for double duty on defense and offense. Another carry, fighting, muscling forward, and across the goal line for Glen Academy touchdown. Doing it all himself on a quick 13-yard drive to cap off on a two-yard run in the final minute of the first quarter. Yeah, again, turnovers going to be a key tonight. Special teams miscue, leads the points for uh, the Red Terrors. Arnold on for the extra point. Good snap, good hold. Like clockwork, it sails through the uprights. So, one mistake from each club results in a touchdown. You don't know what to expect. Glen Academy loves to circle they're running backs like a true carousel. They like to bring them in, get them out, get them on, and get them off. Get a new one in. But the big the offensive line, I think they sort of just got body on body. They're a little bit bigger, bigger physically than the D-line of uh, Creekside, the Knights. And uh, just really sort of leaned on them, and then they bring the extra backs in there and just sort of rent right at them, ran downhill in this weather. A reset for everybody. Obviously, coaches will tell you special teams so crucial at this level in separating good teams from great teams. Even if it didn't appear that Derek Jotty's knee was down on the punts, it's a brand new ball game. Right. Yep. They called it. They, you got to play with it and you got to go. You know, and, and, you know, that's how this game's going to be. Arnold's kickoff. Deep into the end zone, and no chance at a return there. So if you're Creekside, obviously anybody happy enough to ride the back of Williams and let that ground game try to do its best to will a victory in this environment where the rain, no joke, has not stopped at this level for an hour. At what point do you just accept your fate and... Just try to ground and pound your way to a win. Well, you, the guys playing in the game really aren't worried about the rain. You know, they're just getting, they're going, and they're just trying to get the ball moved and get going a little bit of what they're doing. The thing that's going to affect, I think it's going to affect any kind of passing game or big big attempt to pass a game. And then, uh, you know, it's all going to come down to who's going to make the least mistakes, be able to hang on to the ball. I think we're So now after a penalty on Glen Academy, 10 yards from the 25 to 35 to start this next drive. Sticking with Williams, he bounces to the outside. Now cuts it back inside as more flags are down. For now, it's a first down run for Williams. Everyone in red appears Backing to up. understand. It's a penalty on Creekside. That was a, a little holding penalty. 
You know, and in this weather, you know, it could be a could be he's engaged and slips down, and it looks like he's holding as he's falling down. You know, what say you, Coach Sullivan? Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely, <laughs> that's definitely hold. That uh, that wasn't the rain that time. <laughs> no, that's definitely uh, no. You're not going to get him right there. And it did have an effect on the play because he got ability to bounce it out on the hold. I think if not, he gets tackled in the backfield. So right call. Edwards hands off again on first and long. Final seconds come off the first quarter clock. And after 12 minutes in Brunswick, we are even. Each team benefits from a costly mistake by their opponents. Will the rain ever stop? Hopefully. No answers for now as we are just getting started here at Glynn County Stadium. The Knights and Red Terrors all tied up at seven as we move to the second quarter in the inaugural Georgia Florida Border Classic. The second quarter. Each team getting their legs under them. You're really about to learn what kind of football team you have in front of you if you're a coach because it is going to be as mentally draining as physically draining over the next 36 minutes. Yeah, it's going to be whether this weather settled in and we're going to be in this rain the whole game. Creekside basically running the same play throughout this first half with the same guy, Nicky Williams doing his best to carry the rock for the Knights. He only gets back the penalty yardage from an earlier holding penalty before the end of the quarter. So now it's third and ten for Creekside. Williams looking to break loose, but he is in the grasp and goes down quickly. Xavier Cummings, the senior defensive lineman, forces another punt by the Knights. Yeah, they've done a nice job defensively after that first drive of making the adjustment and really getting a lot of guys to the ball. And the uh, penalty didn't help them because they would have moved. You don't want to get back behind the chains in this weather at all. Derek Jaddy on the punt. It's a better snap this time. Plenty of time to boot this downfield. Peacock backs off. And this ball dies right on the 32. Ten forty-nine to go here in the second quarter. Got off to a nice night. Earlier today, McIntosh County Academy. Had a big win over West Nassau, 42 to 8. This is our first day of three. The inaugural Georgia Florida Border Classic. Tomorrow night, we hope to have an on time start for Brunswick and Bowles. More power formation. This is what you can expect the rest of the night. Following blockers up front, this is Peacock. And they just changed the backs out, and the guys are going to run hard and run straight ahead. That's a lot of beef coming at you, and then you got three backs in behind coming at you in that formation. The old offensive line coaches love this. Going behind big bad number 78, John McLeod. One of six starters who plays both ways for the Red Terrors. And Peacock, who can really terrify his opponents. And you got D-Lineman, the big defensive tackle, Cummings in there, too. After an eight-yard pickup, same play, but blown up in the backfield. The adjustment made by Marshawn Turner flying in off the edge. Yeah, that's a really nice job, really nice play. I, I, I think one of the upbacks didn't go and secure the edge on that. But again, that's a good job after giving up a bunch of yards on first down that put him in... Uh, Third and uh, five for the first down. Backs up two yards. One Academy undeterred. 
Same play for a third time in a row. Oh. And enough to get the first down and more. Peacock off to the races. Oh, he and the ball punched out. Loose inside the 10. And finally, a red terror player falls on it in the nick of time. Chandler Owens saves the day after a massive gain. Yeah, that's a really good hustle play right there from Chandler. From Chandler, really good hustle play. And missing the backfield, and then he hits the crease and gets a good rundown, a good race there by number 12. Jay Boyer running him down and going for the arm for the strip. Just there wasn't any other Creekside Knights around there to help get on the ball. But that's a really good job, a really good hustle play right there for Chandler Owens recovering that fumble. A fortuitous bounce for Glen Academy. Back in the red zone, brought to you by Douglas Phelps Insurance. Goal to go from the seven. Stood up at the five. And put down Devontae Lang. And get no more than two yards on his latest carry. Yeah, they sort of get, get it toughed up in there. And they're still just going to run it straight at in the direct snap. I like to keep Devlin in. He just goes out the wide out. Just sort of hangs out out there on his formation. Quarterback. But you know, whatever's working, just keep keeping with it. And that's what they're doing. Second and goal. Right up the middle. Bouncing to the outside and into the end zone for a red terror touchdown. Due to our weather delay earlier, we will conclude tonight's game on News 4 Jacks Plus. Right now, we send it over to the 10 o'clock news. Arnold on for the extra points. Greg Peacock and company doing some heavy lifting on that drive. Back-to-back -back touchdowns for the Red Terrors to take their first lead. Yeah, again, we talked about Peacock being a little bit of a difference maker, another guy that gets in there and run it. And, you know, Lines has done a nice job in that power formation. But Coach, Coach Hildago, he's found sort of his formation and his things he's going to do until Creekside stops him. I don't think we're going to see any other change, especially in this weather. Yeah, what a change from last Friday's game against Camden County where the Red Terrors didn't just lose. I mean, pretty much embarrassed. Right. And Coach Hidalgo said to us, you know, I didn't feel good going into that game because we practiced poorly on Monday and we had a poor practice again on Tuesday. And I looked at my guys following a 30-point defeat and said, yeah, this is what's going to happen when you play good teams and you don't prepare like a good football team. And basically put it up to the rest of his players. What's it going to look like against Creekside, currently rated the number five team on the WJXT Super 10 rankings? I think they've taken that message to heart even after a fumble and 33 yard touchdown drive by the Knights. They've turned things around and really settled in despite the circumstances. Yeah, they're getting behind the sticks early, but it didn't phase them. And again, I think, you know, um, being able to come out and get a little bit of a drive and then get the big turnover to get them some momentum and everything, you know, the weather's not going to change. That's not going to affect them. They just got to go ahead and play. But I don't think, you know, the Red Terrors, they're going to change what they're going to do on offense. They just uh, keep maintaining defensively what they want to do. This game, like so many, want to be one and the trenches. Creekside spreads things out on the first play of its next drive. The result the same. Up the middle for Williams. And that's nine that's ninety-five in there. Uh just just really doing a nice job. I, I tell you they play seventy-nine both ways, seventy-eight both ways. Ninety-five comes in and plays a little bit in that power set. Feeling the low snap, another handoff to Williams. Breaks free from one tackler. And stood up at 25 as he leans forward for an extra yard. Third down and four. 
Yeah, Peyton Parker in there again. He's been pretty active with his with his tackles. But again, they're 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 playing real basic uh, defensively a little bit. They're sort of almost daring him to throw it. Trying to avoid a third straight punt. Edwards looks to the sideline on a crucial third down, nearly midway through the second. Play action fake over the oh, middle and it. dropped. He had Brendan McMillan wide open. That shows you why each team so hesitant to pass here in the first half. Yeah, and he threw a really good ball considering the weather wise. You know, he came off a little play fake and sort of just came out and flung it right there, right in the money. Glenn Academy got a guy up in the in the eye lane, so that might have distracted him in the throwing lane, but uh, that should have been caught first down. Eric Jaddy for a third straight punt now with a good rush. Gets this away, but an angled kick going towards his own sideline. It takes a red terror oh, bounce wow. on the plus side of the field and down at the 48 by Oscar Early. Yeah, that's about a 24-yard punt. Gun, Gun Academy in a good, good position on their side of the 50. Um, again, they're just going to come in, and I bet they're not going to change anything they've done. Why would you? You've had two drives in the power formation, and uh, just going to go back out there and see what they got. Just depend who's going to be the tailback on this drive. Now Creekside needing a big stop itself. Even after the tough start, they turned it over on their opening drive for the second straight week. But a much different turnaround here as Peacock dives forward. It almost seemed like the interception and then pick six late in the second quarter against Camden County really took the wind out of the sails for Glen Academy. But now, even after giving up the fumble and then short field touchdown, we got right back to work. Right. Dug in. Man, again, that, you know, it's it's sort of what they do. They're going to change. They're going to keep the clock rolling. We're down to, what, three minutes before the half, 3.15 in the half. Peacock driving his legs forward. Finally pushed down by Anthony Akel, the Maryland commit. The penalty marker is down. Not quite sure what that's going to be. As it stands, it's third down and two. Let's see what the call is from Craig Hubbard. They go water break timeout while they sort the penalty out. We can multitask, but will we? Take a time out here and see what will happen on the other side. This hydration break brought to you by Body Armor. An academy leads Creekside 14 to 7 on its home field. A personal foul after the previous play and forced at the 40. First down from the 25 is Peacock. Find some room on the outside, but dragged down before he can go anywhere. Akel with another stop. May have present, prevented another GA touchdown. Yeah, he tried to bounce that out a little bit in there. Again, it's the same running play. It's just play, base body on body, getting the extra backs up in there and just try to get something going. And the Creekside guys, you know, they're, they're giving all their effort. They're giving everything they got defensively. Still moves down to the 21. New running back, Devontae Lang. The junior looks left now back towards the middle. Stretches close to the 15, but will be about a yard shy of the first down. 
Now, that time they just blocked it down and sort of ran it more on power off tackle, no pullers, and using the backs up in there. And uh, really, um, you know, eating up clock, keeping creep sides offense off the field, and really getting first downs. Third straight possession in the red zone for Glen Academy. Brought to you by Douglas Phelps Insurance. Third down and a long one. Playing the 185 pound junior tackled for a loss. Yeah, that's a that's a really nice job by the, the end on this side. Number 10 coming down across, making the play. Uh, Ashton Anderson, he's sort of squeezing that thing down, catching it, running it down from behind. But I'll tell you, 58, Jack Hunt, the center, you got to give him credit. They've been in the gun pretty much all night. Every snap's perfect, and in this weather, that's a that's a pretty good feat. Coach Hidalgo of Glen Academy said he'd love to just praise his entire offensive line to the start for this season. Running backs don't get anything. Quarterbacks don't mm -hmm. amass such big stats if you don't have great blocking in all facets of the game. Play clock winding down, and the Red Terrors yet to break the huddle. Coach Hidalgo standing right next to an official and burns his first time out with 3.29 to play in the opening half. You think they're kicking the field goal here, or are they going for it? What do you think, Sean? Yeah, you're the expert, huh? Well, they've got a good kicker. They're up a score, you know, kicked the field goal, two-score game. But they've done a good job moving. It's, what, second and three? I mean, fourth and three. So, um, we'll see what, what Coach got going on right now. And I think they're going to go for it the way it looks like. You almost on every snap, hold your breath because you don't know, is this one going to slip through the hands? Is right. this going to be a little low? We've seen the red terrors have problems with a couple of snaps, but that was really in the opening minutes of the first mm -hmm. quarter. They've really settled in, and it goes back to the consistency. Ninth-year head coach Rocky Hidalgo wants from his team, mm -hmm. and that's just what he's looking for, saying, can my offense have multiple eight, ten-play drives so our defense can get a rest, and vice versa? Can our defense get off the field on third down? Can we stay patient and composed even if we give up big plays? I think both units are passing with flying colors here. Yeah, very, very much so. They're going to stay with it. They're going to stay on it and uh, keep moving forward with everything. Tyler Devlin comes out, but he's been sitting out wide. The quarterback who this team rallies around and points to their mental and physical toughness, largely thanks to their quarterback. Playing with three blockers to his left. Creekside trying to turn things around with a big fourth down stop. But they jump off sides. For fans that don't know, I know you were explaining to yep. me earlier, in high school, once you jump, that's it. It's over. It's not like in college or pro where the snap has to occur. So right. if you jump and then go back, there's no flag. Yeah, if you break the ball, the nose of the ball, they call it encroachment, and that's a five-yard penalty, and that's really just just put a sort of little bit of a bad feeling right there for the Creek sides. On first down, Lang popped at the 10 and pushed down into a big pile of red terror and night defenders i tell you what it's big physical inside there if you watch their kids get up off the ground both sides the offensive line and the defense line big physical physical punishment going on in that inside the big men laying on top of each other getting physical knees getting cut out from underneath them yeah it's a it's a war down inside those linemen edwin jackson number 70 john mcleod number 78 Two loudest on the line for Glen Academy. And leading the way for this rushing attack as they set up Lang once again. But Submarine, just as he crosses the 10, 
Only a gain of one. They need the two to get a first down. Yeah, and Andrew Jenkins, the sophomore defensive line, got up in there, got a little low that time, almost cut the offensive lineman to create a pile and didn't give uh, Lang anywhere to run. So I'd like to see him take the ball and run toss outside out of that formation. where They got them all packed up inside and uh, get some movement. They haven't had any misdirection coming back where maybe they pull the up back, start that way, and then come back because number 10 on the back side is really coming off the edge. So, again, coach taking his time, eating up clock, keeping them off the field, and just moving. Especially with Creekside set to receive the kickoff to start the third quarter. The chess match continues under the downpour at Glen County Stadium. 154 to go, second quarter. And we mentioned Glen Academy coming off a really embarrassing loss to Camden County, trying to turn things around, pick up their third win of the season if they can hang on today. You take a look, it doesn't get any easier next week on this field against Brunswick all the way through into November for this team that's very experienced and trying to get back to the playoffs after a losing season in 2021. Yeah, they, they've got a pretty good group coming. You know, they got the big uh, in-county rivalry next week with uh, Brunswick, which will be – they've got a monster game tomorrow night with Bowles, which will be here as part of our uh, border wars. And uh, just, uh, just getting into the regional schedule and everything. So they've got a pretty good hoe. So for them to just keep plugging along, they'll get an extra day rest for next week's game, not playing tomorrow, playing tonight. So, uh, yeah, I think they'll just keep leaning on the big guys and see what happens. But I'm curious if they've got any kind of misdirection off this, pulling those upside guys, or if they're going to just keep pounding off tackle. Third down and a long six. This is Peacock. Breaks loose, going for the pylon, and into the end zone. Greg Peacock caps off another long, sustained touchdown drive for the Red Terrors. And that time they went outside. All the backs went out. They sort of blocked it down and got body on body outside. They just don't have enough guys outside because they've been concentrating on taking care of the middle. Everybody's down. The three up backs are out, and they're just trying to get body on body and getting the wall moving in front of them. That's a really nice job by their team. Wasn't expected to play today after he missed practice all week. Good rush by the Knights. No good. Look, looked like he stuttered a little bit on the kick, like maybe it might have dropped the ball or, or mishandled the ball because he almost looked like he had to stop and stutter. And so, enough to push it wide to the right. Still 20 consecutive points put up by the Red Terrors. Both scores this quarter as Creekside's offense is really stalled. They only score a 33-yard touchdown drive off a turnover. Yeah, they, they've been they've been handled up. But Glen Academy, like I said, have done a nice job. Taking a look at what's coming up for Coach McIntyre's group. Well, you go play Buckholtz next week. Yep. Mandarin, who gave Bowles all it could handle last week, and then, of course, what Coach McIntyre calls the SEC West of Suburbia, Bartram Trail, Fleming Island, back-to-back -back weeks, and, oh, your reward, you close out at Ponte Vedra early November. They gave Florida High a tough test last week themselves. Yeah, they, uh, they, they're they 0-2, Ponte Vedra, but I think they're pretty good. They play two really quality teams to start the year. Nothing comes easy, even for the number five team in the WJXT Super 10 rankings. Yeah, they had a chance to field that one and a little miscommunication in the back between, between the two up back guys. So again, Creekside 146. They, they'd like to get a drive, maybe get down, get some points any way they can here, but this weather is not helping them with any kind of passing opportunity. I've only seen one throw this quarter, and it was a would-be first down dropped by the Knights. Wilson Edwards and his offense trying to muster up anything with two timeouts.
Williams up the middle. I tell you, they're doing a really good job inside. It's going to say nowhere to go. No crease. As every A, B gap plugged up by that stout defensive line of Glen Academy. Yeah, we're going to... Now trying to hurry up, but it doesn't help. Quay Evans, the sophomore defensive lineman, busts through the O-line. Third and long again for Creekside. And, you know, the inability to, to be able to do a couple different things because of the weather affecting them a little bit, but they're getting a little bit more handled up front by the, the, the Red Terror defensive line. All three guys inside are doing a real nice job. Now winding down that play clock at about 12 seconds. Not going to do anything dumb here. A fake. Edwards spins inside and is tackled short of the first down marker. Got him. Use him if you got him. Rocky. Hey, I'll go. Uh, we call his last time out, but a flag is down at the moment. Peyton Parker made the tackle. Really nice job. Been very active tonight. One of the linebackers in there. We got a personal foul, I want to believe, here. Which is, if it's on, yep, it looks like the Red Terrors. I mean, you just put yourself making them punt. Got an opportunity. And that's just not good football right there. Coach not to be happy about that at all. Now a lifeline for Creekside. No 29 seconds, but to have an opportunity then having to give it back to your opponent. Creekside does get the football to start the third quarter. But there's been a complete momentum shift since it was 7-0 Creekside in the first minutes of the game. Yeah. We used to say that's a selfish penalty, that one. You know what I mean? You get that penalty and it hurts the team. You can do attention to yourself, but that's a selfish penalty right there. Lucky for the Red Terrors. Only have to lock in for 29 more seconds. I mean, really, it's that might be their first first down since the first drive. You know, Kirk sides. And, and they've done, right. you know, they've done a really nice job up here. The the front three, you know, they're playing that three four look, keeping those outside linebackers sort of in there, uh, doing really really good run fits. The inside backers have just done a tremendous job. Parker and Lyons. Been a total team effort. That's what Rocky said it was going to take to get a win. We don't have that single superstar, but we have guys that play the right way and feed off of each other. Let's see if we're going to maybe take a little shot here. Edwards surveying, now takes a shot. Looking downfield and dropped. Had Hampton Rydell over the middle of the fields. It's going to be tough to catch anything. Yeah. Beyond a few yards for the rest of the night. Yeah, you got you know you got to take a shot. I mean, I I don't have a problem with that, but they got to block those guys up front because Big 78 was in the backfield. 95 got in there pretty good. They they got pretty good penetration. Didn't get that play much time to develop. I think Coach McIntyre probably going to take his time and get out of this thing. They swing it outside, looking to set up the receiver screen, but tackled inbounds. Not much Ashton Reynolds could do. Yeah, he's the lead receiver coming in the game, averaging like 17 yards a catch. But, you know, in these conditions, not going to happen. So, And that ends the first half. Glenn Academy, after a poor start, turns things around and in a hurry. Three straight scores to end the half. Thanks in large part to that man, Greg Peacock, setting up two scores for the Red Terrors, and they lead it at the break 20-7 to in the Georgia-Florida Border Classic.
Still completely drenched out here in Brunswick. Hasn't bothered Lynn Academy. They really settled in. And after an early fumble, scored 20 straight points. 13 of them in that second quarter. Al, how does Creekside regroup coming out of the locker room? They get the football. And off another deep kick by Arnold. It's fielded at the two. With a good running lane, chopped down at the 30. Yeah, that, that ball's probably really heavy, you know. <laughs> good return from Andrew Kelly still. Now, what do you want to see? What would you have said to your team after watching things slip away from you quite literally in that first half? Well, I think we got to just block a little bit better up front because they, you know, they're playing the three down line, playing a little bit of three, four look, and we're, they're beating us inside. You know, they're beating the Creekers inside. So uh, that's what that's what they need to concentrate to, Coach. Getting a little different formation here. Pass to the outside is complete. McMillan thrown around and down after a short game. They only give him. The line of scrimmage there. Thought he might have fallen forward for a yard. And try to get a little RPO look there, get the ball moving around a little bit with that. And uh, it just, it's, it's a struggle to throw it. Even the short stuff is it just a struggle to throw. Edwards rolls to his right, sets up. Nice throw and drop. Got Ashton Reynolds. Would have had a first down if he just turned and stretched. But it's another drop pass for Creekside, and it's hard to blame them under these conditions. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. They did a nice job. They got in a little trips over formation with the tight end, the extra blocker. Rolled right to it, little set down route through, on the money, right through his hands. Already third and ten for the Knights. They'll throw for a third straight try. Stepping up Edwards over the middle and broken up. Penalty marker is down. Oh, Willie Butler man. had the defense downfield. <laughs> okay. Got another first down. Could be another gift to the Creekside offense that has hardly mustered anything tonight. Less than 100 total yards in that first half. But a minute into the third quarter, they receive a gift on a pass interference penalty from Glenn Academy. And this is something to watch for the Red Terrors. They had a bit of an ugly 22-12 win against McIntosh Academy a few weeks ago. And Rocky Hidalgo said his team did not sustain the energy in the second half like they had in the first. Nicky Williams trying to have a better second half than first. Yeah, he came out ran hard on that first drive, and, but he's been bottled up since then. You know, and the coach is trying to do, get some things and trying to change up the, the pace a little bit, but really trying to get their guys in just a little bit better spot, get some confidence in them, get a good drive to start the second half. Five-yard run out to midfield. Again to Williams, brushes by one tackler. But thrown down by John McLeod immediately after. The loudest leader on the line for the Red Terrors makes a big tackle after a short gain of two. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he, you know he's playing there and he jumps over and plays up on the offensive line, and uh, John's been like I said very active. Him and him and uh, Chandler Rowan inside have been very active tonight. Edwards to his right, probes for a moment, now tucks it and looking to run. Trying to get to the edge, he has the first down as he's tripped up out of bounds. Yeah, that was a really good job. Taking advantage, moving the pocket a little bit. Nothing nothing there, it's broken down. And uh, you know, just makes a play pretty much out of nothing. They were trying to get the little stop route to get to the first down. They get him cut off, and he's got enough presence to, to get back in and get it done. That replay brought to you by RV Clinics, but that ball is fumbled and immediately recovered by Glenn Academy. Chandler Owens, 32, the nose guard. Chandler on the spot. 
Look what I found. And just as Creekside had some momentum, it is quickly gone. Yeah, know, that's going to be deflating, too, because they, they had a really nice drive in there. And it just looks like they sort of dropped the ball, and, get, and then uh, he kicked it as it went to the ground. Edwards mishandled it yep. on the handoff, and it, like you said, went right off of Williams into a bad spot. So now Glenn Academy takes over at the 38. It's going to be Lang, right, at the tailback spot. And ran it several times out of this formation. And following behind is big, burly offensive line. More yeah. than happy with a gain of four on the first play from scrimmage for this offense. And it goes down to what Coach Hidalgo wants from his team, and this is what he was looking to see after his team went four, six, and one last year. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we had to really find out who wants to be here. Right. You know, there's a lot of pride for this program right now playing its 102nd season of football. And I said we had to weed out some guys and see who's going to be committed, who's going the extra mile. But the extra mile for us is just going to be status quo. And I said it's okay that we lost some guys because we feel like this group is just stronger and better, and that's going to carry us late in the season. Yeah, they care. You know, they care about their school. They care about the product on the field. They care about pride in what they're doing. Tries to keep his team even. Steven said it's always 48 minutes of football. TV, nah. Big opponent, no. Just going to go out there and try to get better every week. And he said there was a lot to improve upon after a 30-point loss last week to Camden County. Greg Peacock back in the game. Off the direct snap. Is tackled from behind. Guess who? Nate Hernandez yet again. Yeah, Lifts more than 300 in the weight room. Not going to have a problem bringing Peacock down. No, he got after it pretty good. He's been real active. But he's been filling the lane and everything. Peacock sort of hesitated on that. Sort of got in there. Now drive fielding probably hits it, increases it. But on the wet field, you just got to make up your mind and go and go do what you do. A crucial stop for Creekside's defense. An extra man on the field for a moment. Get him off bad just snap. in time as there's a bad snap. The Creeks got it. And recovered at the 25. Special teams errors from each team tonight. I think that was Anthony Keel. And the door just cracked open. open. Like you said, it was Anthony Akel who came flying in after the mishandled punt. See if they breathe a little life to turn over. They got it in 25-yard line going in. Already four and a half minutes gone by in the third quarter. Williams still going. Fights forward for a first down. This kid is tough, Kevin. Yeah, they get a good job inside, blocking, runs over the linebacker, keeps his feet churning, and that's a that's probably one of his better runs of the night. Why not give it right back to him? But he's hit and stopped by Ryan Young. But still, the Knights in the red zone again. This time brought to you by Don Mason of State Farm Insurance. Five minutes gone by in the third quarter, and... Because of the conditions of the showers that have not stopped since before kickoff. You know, it's going to be a limited number of possessions this half. Low snap, but still for Williams. Breaks through the middle of the field. And into the end zone for Creekside. Yeah, that turnover is just what they needed getting in there. Taking advantage of it. Good job blocking 75 in there, putting the, putting the body on the body. Moving guys around, Williams finishes it off, gets in the end zone. Joe Bartles there, and they're getting after it, doing a nice job inside. Good poise from Edwards. That snap was low and away. 
This kick up and through the upright, so a six-point game. If you remember, Glen Academy missed an extra point in that second quarter. Mm -hmm. Coaches will tell you, special teams matter. Well, after a mishandled punt, Creekside punches it in from 25 yards out, capping off with that run from Williams. Well, we do have some brave souls still out there in the, in the weather. Some MVP, those parents are MVPs. But, uh, yeah, that turnover was good. But it's it sort of what was, a, you know, they got the, gave the turnover back to them, then they get the turnover back, and then they get be able to put it in and get a drive. And it looks like, you know, the weather, the wear and tear on the linemen, because, again, they're playing a bunch of guys, Glen Academy, both ways. Maybe they're starting to wear down a little bit. So more than 18 and a half minutes of football left. Where does this rank in just the pure comedy in the rain that has not stopped? It's been about two inches of rain in the last few hours here in Brunswick. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's one of those things you're glad you're up here, not down there. A little onsider. Oh, good, good job. kick fielded. The hands team out in full force. Good instincts by Eric Rodarte, the senior wide receiver, to fall on the football. With 6.35 to go in the third quarter, we step aside for a hydration break brought to you by Body Armor. Grigside right back in this one, down by six. This week's Super 10 rankings from WJXT has Creekside in the number five spot after a big win against Nice. And a little bit of trouble here. Just a reminder for you too, University Christian in action tomorrow at 4.30, Bowles at 7.30 in a prime time matchup against Brunswick. You don't want to miss any of the other five games in the inaugural Georgia-Florida Border Classic. Taken over at the 39 in the short field after a penalty following the kickoff. We're just only finding out about that penalty now as they move the line of scrimmage from just shy midfield out to the 39 and a gain of one on the carry. Yeah, they tried to run, they tried to run the little counter off that that time and it just real slow developing and everything. New running back, Greg Peacock. Oh, he drops the it. ball. It's Krieger's loose. It. And Akel has it for Creekside. The Knights pounce on back to back errors from the Red Terrors. And this game has flipped once again in momentum. Yeah, he just dropped that. I mean, the snap was good. Perfect. He just took off running before he got it. Give the life, the new life to the Creekers. This Creekside team, we just showed you number five in the city rankings, but they only returned three starters from last year's team. And yet, as Coach Sean McIntyre said, we're at that point as a program, we're not rebuilding, we're reloading. As they give it back oh. to Williams, all kinds of room to run. Lightning strikes for the Knights. 59 yards and an extra point away from retaking the lead. Yeah, they just sort of, yeah, they got them blocked on that play. And Williams does a nice job right there on the run following the little wrap around by the tackle. And then he was gone off to the races. Jacob Akel springs Williams free. Must be a massive sigh of relief for Creekside. All three touchdowns have been thanks to an opponent's error. Yep. And you know, as the game wears on, you know, it's just the, the wall, the, the conditions and everything. And Creekside, I think they've found out what they want to do. That's good. Derek Jaddy splits the uprights. 21-20. Nearly midway through the third quarter. 
Yeah, getting in the trip stuff with the trips closed with the tight end. Uh, it, it's taking their three guys out. They're covering and playing a man out there, so they really have nobody in the middle of the field. So once once he breaks the, the second level, he's gone because there's nobody there. After bottling him up the entire first half, Creekside had less than 100 yards of total offense on back-to-back -back quick drives. They now have 84 yards. The 59-yard run by Williams there and the 25-yard drive after the mishandled punt. Brand new ball game here in Brunswick. Yep, turnovers will, turnovers will hurt, especially in a game like this. Creekside dominating another third quarter as this kickoff stays inbounds at the four. Peacock looking to go to the opposite field, but held up around his ankles, and the finishing blow delivered by Ian Schultz. That's really good job coverage up there. Everybody else he got by. We got the one guy in the contain doing his job, not chasing the ball, and he waits on him and makes the tackle. Really nice job there by Ian. For the second straight week, Creekside is shot out of a cannon to start the second half. That Nice game, if you remember, is a one-point game. And then a couple of Nice mistakes Creekside made the most of. Mm -hmm. Capitalizing on those errors like they're doing again tonight. They won that game by 21. Not only up by a single point at the moment, despite back-to-back -back touchdowns. Out of Through the, the middle. Akel drops the new ball carrier. We've seen him a few times, Devontae Lang, but a much more traditional formation for Glenn Academy. Yeah, just re back to regular offense formation. Um, little 10 personnel, no tight end, one back. And they're just, uh, you know, got a good, good movement, a little change of pace. The ability maybe to throw it a little bit if they want to, but I mean they could continue to do. They kept Creekside in the game. They could continue to do what they want to do on the run. Tyler Devlin more than capable as a runner too. More comfortable handing it off up the middle again. Nice effort by DJ Baldwin, who's just shy of a first down. Feel like it's almost necessary for Glen Academy to move the chains here. A couple of tough mistakes. Yeah, they've got to they've got to move the chains, get their offense sort of settled in a little bit, and go back to do what they're doing. Back in that power formation, and again, Lang stretches forward. It's just enough for a first down. I really like that formation, that power formation. Sort of man oh man oh, you know what I mean? We're gonna we're gonna lay on you and lay on you, Creekside. They're they're fighting back. Big battle inside. Get back into regular formational ten personnel now. Coming back a little football, ten personnel is one back, no tight ends for the people at home listening. Coach Adalgo looking for who's gonna be tough on his team. He points to his quarterback, saying that's the one who's gotten everybody in line. But nothing he can do here as he's been forced to hand it off all night. And Devontae Lang, after just getting the first down, put down in the backfield. Yeah, Cole, Cole Long in there, 55, one of the down defensive tackle. Gets in, defeats the block, good technique, gets off the block, makes the tackle. Four-yard loss. Inside of four minutes in the third quarter. Somehow I'm saying the rain's picking up again. Fake handoff. Devlin scoots up the middle as a fly comes in. That's going to be a hold. Good tackle from Colton Lievel. Potentially a decision. It would be about third and nine. Would you accept? They're going to back him up. Yeah, they'll definitely. I think they'll back him up and make that long yardage. 
Maybe they're not having thrown any semblance of throwing the ball. So back them up, make them drive the field. Well, we expected both teams to keep it on the ground, even in normal conditions. Like you said, it's easy to you know, they decline it, give them the, give them the yardage. So third and nine. Glenn Academy has been running the ball all night and really kept quarterback Tyler Devlin off to the side. He'll hand it off again. Spinning free and put down. Absolutely lit up. Nothing DJ Baldwin could do spinning back inside. Nate Hernandez take a bow, young fella. Yeah, did a good job, had it going, had a good play, hole up inside, didn't take it. Hernandez come in off the cutback, clean that thing up, nice. Brings up fourth down, it's been all Creekside defensively this half, coming into play, getting the adjustments. One of those three returning starters from last year's eight and three team. Coach McIntyre talking about his Mike linebacker oh, is there's team. contact on the punt. Ball rolling inside the 20. At first glance, it appeared like Cody Arnold took a shot, but no flag is down. Hmm. Surprised about that one. Not sure if he was trying to sell it, but from our angle in the press box, it looks like there may have been contact on his foot. Again, they found something in the, this formation that they really like. They're turning the guard out and bringing the, the tackle under off the little inside zone run play. Williams has been the man all night. Why go away from him now? So for a moment, Glenn Academy trying to punch the football out. And again, and again it's, it's pretty much inside zone. You know, just sort of moving them in. And uh, again, now Creekside's with the lead, want to get a nice drive, eat up a bunch of clock. Much different doing that with a lead than trailing. Yes. High Creekside was down 20 to seven, entering the third quarter. Capitalizing on Glen Academy miscues and 28 red, putting the team on his back here. 125 and counting left here in the third quarter third and one Williams another tote no they blew it they blew it a little short to definitely depend on the spot it's like you said it's going to be tough Fourth down marker is up. But referee Craig Hubbard signals for a first down. Oh, he did. Okay. All right. That looked a lot closer. Quarterback oh, keeper Edwards. Man, that's a nice job right there. We thought we'd call uh, Prince's name, David Prince, number two, a little bit more on offense with the passing game tonight, but he's going to step over, play a little outside linebacker. Nice job pulling the quarterback on that. The 6'5 wide receiver has six touchdowns this year. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? The only thing that can stop him, I guess, <laughs> is the rain. The heavens. <laughs> Mother Nature stops him. Who covers that guy? Mother Nature. Inside of 10 seconds before second and 13. Creekside dominates the third quarter. Fours up for Coach Sean McIntyre and his undefeated Creekside Knights. They scored all 14 points in the third quarter. Can they finish things off with a win? We come back under the lights, under the rain in Glenn County Stadium when we return.
side continues to dominate this second half. But now shifting into the fourth quarter, can they finish? Pre-snap movements. He could see it immediately from Glenn County. Five yards will help make it second and eight. Another handoff up the middle for Williams, hanging tightly onto the football as Xavier Cummings was trying to strip it loose. Got to take care of the rock here. That's been the difference in this game for a lot of these touchdowns. Yeah, there's been a, you know, and you know going in with the weather being the way it is, you're going to get some turnover, a big third down. I look for him to try to draw him here and then uh, run that ball again inside. See? And another jump into the neutral zone. That's a first down. It was third and four. Make it first and ten after two critical errors. All right. Two penalties, two ten yards on that drive. They've been off the field, gotten the ball back. So let's give you the clipboard again, Coach. How do you weather this storm and get back on track after you had such a great second quarter tonight? You just got to keep playing, man. You got to get them in there. You got to stop them. Don't give them any opportunity. Airing get it a, out downfield, broken up. Jump ball for Ashton Reynolds, but it was Marshawn Turner knocking it away, saying, uh-uh, going to have to earn it. You had plenty of time to throw, but uh, you can just tell uh, that ball's got to be heavy because that thing sort of sailed up in there and just sort of hung up in the air a long time. But they took a shot, which is good. I mean, you know, they're still being aggressive, still trying to do something. Williams on the carry. Cuts it back inside. He has a first down and more. In a foot race down the sideline. It's Anthony Akel who finally tracks him down. Pushed him out of bounds at the 17. The Creekside coaching staff looking for a flag on a late hit. I don't think they're going to get it. But still, another big time play by Nikki Williams. Yeah, they just a little outside zone got blocked and the corner stayed outside with the force guy where if he'd have fit in, he'd have had it right then and there. But, uh, yeah, just changed up. They've been running inside, inside, inside. And just changed it up, moved him outside that time. A little outside zone. And the marker is thrown, so move it half the distance to the goal. The Knights in the red zone brought to you by Don Mason State Farm Insurance. Old reliable Nikki Williams coming up with play after play after play in this second half. Yeah, I don't know about that penalty. That kid, he's running a full steam, and the kid's running a full steam at him, and he sort of just flings him at the end. I don't know about that. There wasn't anything malicious in that, but see if we get a dose of. Ten tight on the line. Around the ankles. Good tackle. Trying to settle in here. In the big series, got to get a stop here. Hold to the field goal. Second and goal from the five. The fake to Williams, tossed to the back of the end zone, but incomplete. Yeah, that ball got tipped right there. I wasn't quite sure who got his hands up on it and got it on, but he had him wide open. They were looking for Mark Raniklev, the senior tight end in the back of the end zone. Great awareness at the last moment. Yeah, that cor the corner up top came off the edge. Got his hands up on top of it. Big third down. Williams stood up as a flag comes in from the back judge. John McLeod with the initial stop. I don't know what that, that penalty was. 
Illegal use of hands, maybe? Coach come back him up. So that's a third goal from the, what are we on, the 11? 15. 15, okay. Do you even dare try to set up a field goal in this weather? If they move the ball to the middle of the field, I'm okay with it. Or if they get a big run and they can get down and get it in there close. They'll let them throw. Oh, it's picked. Oh! Oh, and friendly fire downfield. A microcosm of this second half for Glenn Academy. Yeah, they did a nice job. Got a good job brushing up top. And just as he's hit, he's thrown, he's hit. 21 has it for Glenn Academy. And they run into it, Willie Butler, and then the linebacker runs into him and drops it. Would have been a big turnover right there. Probably going to have some room to run back, too, on that, too, because it was sort of in the flat away from everybody. Here's your field goal. Instead, they will try a 33-yard field goal. They better play fake. Ronald Derek Jatty. Better play fake. Sean Ashenfelder to hold. This kick, not nearly close. But at least Creekside avoids true disaster by turning it over in the red zone. Yeah, and they've been playing so well defensively, too, so why not take the chance right there? You know, if you throw it in the end, towards the end zone and he catches it, gets tackled, hey, maybe you go for it on fourth down because you pretty much have held your own the second half. But I, I'm not – I think kicking the field goal was fine there. A little nervous about the snap, though. Yeah. As everybody rightfully should. <laughs> This game has swung back and forth in momentum, thanks in large part to bad snaps. The rain has not stopped for hours. As to start this drive, Devontae Lang busts through for a first down run. Give him 11 to move the chains. Yeah, he, he, he's run hard tonight. Lane's run hard and then jumps over and plays linebacker. Both their guys have done a really nice job trying to change the pace of everything and get some fresh legs in there. Rotating their backs. You know, that most of those guys are playing on defense, so they're rotating their back. But the Creekside defense has rose to the occasion. Glenn Academy playing without Hank Noonan tonight. At 100 yards last week against Camden County. But they have ample players who can carry the rock for them. Yeah, you're just sort of running a little inside zone and really doing a good job of getting up on them. And, and you know, Creekside, they're, they're, they're content. They've got the lead. They're in no hurry, you know. I know the Red Terrors, they want to sort of grind it out, eat up as much as clock, try to, try to score right there. But, you know, a lot of time left. But, again, not full Arsenal offense. Hank Noonan is in the backfield. Finally gets his first carry on this run. Lays the boom on the defender and has just enough for another Red Terror first down. I wonder if he was over there politicking, Coach. Hey, Coach, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. I'm fresh. Get fresh legs now. Bring in fresh legs. He had a 76-yard touchdown run for their only score last week, but re-aggravated a high ankle sprain injury. Up until this drive has not seen the field. But back-to-back -back carries for Noonan. Sidesteps one defender across midfield. And back-to-back -back first downs for Hank Noonan. Yeah, you can just tell, like, he's got fresh legs. You know what I mean? You can see where he hits that a little bit differently. And, uh, you know, he's probably feeling pretty good right now, trying to keep people off of him and laying on him. Coach Rocky Hidalgo said what he wanted to see out of his team, consistency and composure. Noonan gets a third straight carry, but is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Once again off the edge, Marshawn Turner, excuse me, Ashton Anderson with the tackle for Creekside. We saw 
some of those long drives that he wanted to see in the consistency. Even his defense really stuffing Creekside for less than 100 yards mm -hmm. of offense in that first half. But things get away from them in the third quarter. Now trying to right the ship and take a victory in a tight ball game nearly five minutes into the fourth quarter. He wanted his team to grow up a little after a 30-point loss last week. Before the next snap. And it continues to rain here in Brunswick at Cullen County Stadium. <laughs> Glen Academy will talk things over. Or what do you make of it? Well, we'll get your thoughts on the other side, Coach. Hydration break here brought to you by Body Armor. Creekside currently clinging to a one-point lead in the fourth. Second and long for Glen Academy coming out of the hydration break. What's it going to take for Glen Academy to get over the hump on this drive? I, I just think they got to keep keep changing it up a little bit and keep moving them a little bit and uh, change up what they're doing. Up the gut, Noonan. Lowers his shoulder again as he gets into the second level of the defense. Sets up third and short. And what you assume is four down, down territory. territory. Yeah, definitely. They get a little bit of change of pace right here. They got Noonan out of the game right now. Again, doing a good job of rotating their backs. Not worried about the clock right now too much. It's definitely four down territory, no matter they get it or not. Now double trouble. Lang to the left, Peacock to the right. Right after the handoff, a hit made at the line, and they'll be short. Ashton Anderson really making a name for himself on the defensive line tonight. Yeah, they did a real good job, and he come knifing off that backside edge. And, uh, again, he's had a bunch of tackles. There are going to be some sore bodies in these two games tomorrow, especially all those inside guys. Good big play right here. Fourth and two, fourth and one and a half. Getting the power. Lane came up short. He'll get the direct snap. Through the middle, dives for the first down marker. It's going to be close. They'll stop the clock with 524 remaining. Where's the ball marking? Ooh, a favorable spot for the Red Terrors. Let's see if they bring out the chain gang for the first time tonight. The chain is just just a shade below the, the 37, and the ball looks like it's crossed the 37 from our angle. I think they're going to get it. I think that you're right. I think they got a little generous spot, but it's going to be really close. Get that replay on there again. They knifed in from the outside as he went to jump and lunge, but this will be really close right here. Ball right at the 37. They'll stretch the chain. One side ready to go crazy. Oh, they got the Georgia. They got the Georgia spot. By the nose of the football, the drive continues for the Red Terrors. The Georgia spot. <laughs> Glen Academy, one of the oldest schools in the country. Founded in 1788, the reason why they wear that decal on the side. Playing their 102nd season of football. 
the four-time regional tra champs. Trying to get their third win of the season. They can complete the comeback in the final minutes. Quarterback keeper. And Devlin dives ahead down to the 35. The kid this team has rallied around after a rare losing season in 2021. Played with a hip injury for much of that season. Coach was saying he could barely run in those final weeks. But kids notice those little things. Right. Somebody that just refuses to quit. Even in a losing season where you're not playing for playoff wins or playoff berths. It's a reason why they've turned things around early this year. He'll keep it again. But Nate Hernandez says hello. But a flag down oh. at the line of scrimmage. Could that be a late hit on Creekside? Devlin was asking for it. Is that what they're calling? Yep. That's going to be first down. So instead of third and ten, personal foul should put Glenn Academy at the 20. Yeah, I think that uh, quarterback did a nice job, but I think he missed a read on that one. I think he should have handed that off. He kept it pulled and the end was right there. Trying to run a little option off, off of that. They've been very successful off that play tonight. But that's a big penalty. So we've had a, uh, a questionable mark and a big penalty against Crickside. 15 yards enforced from the 37 where the foul occurred. So not in the red zone just yet, but... The field shortening, that much more. A Glenn Academy offense eating up the clock here in the fourth quarter. On a direct snap, up the gut. Anderson with a tackle quickly. And up before a short gain of three down to the 19. Yeah, they wanted a timeout at the coaches in the box right there. They're a little bit misaligned. Well, one of their kids did a real good job inside of getting that movement. So, In the red zone brought to you by Don Mason State Farm Insurance. Lang, nowhere to go. Off the edge. Anthony Akel. Yeah, Akel's been able to get really involved. You know, he's really he's really a defensive back, you know, and he's up there playing up close to the line, really giving him great, great support in the second half on the adjustment. Third and seven from the 19. Glenn Academy still with two timeouts, but it feels like this is its best chance. Scoreless so far in the second half. Mistakes aplenty. Creekside capitalized on and retook the lead. And now pre-snap movement once again. We've seen about half a dozen offsides called so far tonight. Yeah, those are the things that drive the coaches crazy right there now. Now third and two. Looks like Noonan back in to run out of the shotgun here. Out of the Wildcat. This has been the play of choice tonight for the Red Terrors. It's Noonan in traffic. Trying to push the pile forward. He'll be about a yard short. Glenn Academy does have one of the best kicking, punting prospects in America in Cody Arnold. Well, the offense staying on the field.
Clock winding down with 2.08 to play. Sean McIntyre uses his first timeout. Yeah, big play here, of course. I mean, it's really a ball game right here. Fourth and two. Fourth and what, one and a half, two maybe. And, uh, you know, they get it. They keep the clock running. Two two oh eight left, and uh, if they don't get it, it's probably done. Creeks will probably run it out. They'd be lucky to get the ball back, or, you know. But again, weather conditions and everything. Fourth and one from the thirteen. Each team with two timeouts left. Glen Academy really trying to show some growth on the field they call home. They really got it out. A tough overtime win get back to that is we hope to have better weather tomorrow we kick things off tomorrow at 4 30 with charlton county and university christian and then under the lights prime time brunswick on its home field welcoming the number two team in the wjxt super 10 rankings bowls off a gutsy win over mandarin last week set up to face the pirates Hard count doesn't work this time on fourth and one. And now, the other sideline. <laughs> Rocky Hidalgo wants to rethink things. Now, both coaches really talked about it. The run game was going to be the difference. Obviously, the battle in the trenches going to decide it. And who gets that push on either side of the line? We've seen great discipline yep. and plays off the edge all second half from Creekside. So now it's just really man, oh man, you know, it's really going to be like who's going to want to get off, who's going to make the play, who's going to slip the block, or who, how the double team is going to get to get movement to get enough to get them moving forward. All right, it's just as simple as that. You can't say anything at this point in the game. Oh, he's kicking a field goal. So... They will try and kick a 30-yard field goal. Cody Arnold with a favorable spot. Right in the middle of the field, but the rain's still coming down. Good snap, good hold, kick on its way, and it's pushed wide to the right. Creekside celebrates a massive stop in the red zone. Wow. Let's check out the RV Clinic's replay. Oh, he just, yep, he just missed it. A missed extra point and now a wow. missed field goal. Just two more key plays that Glenn Academy has been on the wrong side of. And then they're just going to try to run it out. They still got, what, two timeouts left? Nicky Williams runs right into one of his own linemen at the 20-yard line. And immediately, Hidalgo uses his last timeout. That's one thing about it. You know, high school football got a really good kicker and everything. Snap was good. Hold was good. He just pushed it. Just missed it. This game far from over. Each time we've thought one team's had the advantage, it's been a play made, a mistake by their own doing. Take care of the ball. They got to just take care of the ball on offense. That's what they're telling the running back. Take care of the ball. Both hands on it in, in the thing. One first down, we win. Game's over. Get the first down, we win. If not, we'll turn it over, get, let's play good defense. Even on back-to-back -back stops, you figured even after a punt, you'd have about 30-ish seconds yeah. of that 40-second play clock. Trying to be extra careful with each snap, each handoff. Creekside has coughed it up once this half on a bad handoff. Clean this time for Williams, oh, he got who it. busts through. One more big run for Nikki Williams. Yep. And finally goes down inside the red zone. That should do it.
a one-man wrecking crew on this night. Nikki Williams powering Creekside to a 3-0 start. That's a good job there, seeing the hole breaking through. And then again, just go down. You've already made the run. They can't stop the clock. They'll just shoot and just going down on it right now. And the red zone brought to you by Don Mason, State Farm Insurance, Victory Formation, with a minute 15 left. Now, Coach said the other day, when he lost 19 starters from last year's eight-win team, the lights come on in week one. And he said, I have no idea what to expect against Vieira. Right. Because it's one thing to practice and look good, but you come out, you take the field, the band's in the stands, the fans are going crazy, somebody's punching you in the mouth. You just don't know. Right. And I'm so impressed with how this team buys into our game plan and just goes out and executes. And they go out and play. They, they play every play, good, bad, and different. They come back and play the next play. Everything's the same. I mean, it's a tribute, a couple turnovers and everything. Is there any doubt who would be the player of the game? Nikki Williams, all night long, through the rain, through the adversity, does it himself to give him 10 touchdowns on the year. And this last one, the difference in the ball game. His 59-yard score, not a bad one either as time expires. Our game MVP brought to you by Rich Products Corporation. And it really was one man who was the difference tonight. Yep. And, uh, and I think the linemen played better. I think they made an adjustment. Now, uh, the defensively, Creeks, I made an adjustment at halftime and really slowed, them, slowed uh, Glenn Academy. The turnover for Glenn Academy didn't hurt. But I, they did a good job, really good job. A true gut check win for the Creekside Knights. Living up to the hype here early in September. Coach Sean McIntyre celebrating on the field. Hyped up for his Knights who have continued to turn things around. We are just getting started here in the Georgia-Florida Border Classic. Day one in the books. Plenty action to come tomorrow with a doubleheader that features Brunswick and Bowles at 7.30. You don't want to miss any of the action, but... For now, we say good night. Creekside finds a way to get it done in the second half and hang on for a 21-20 win. Good night.